Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome here to Hoskins. Brad and I are heading up to KV on an hour and 10 minute flight. We have a little bit of a tailwind today, so it might actually be a little bit less, but it looks like it's going to be nice weather going up there. Just look at the satellite real quick. Oh yeah, it's like perfectly clear heading all the way up there. Which is really nice because when we were looking at the weather yesterday, it was saying that we were going to have stuff to fight along all the way up there, but other changes quickly here. All right, winds, we'll go up to 17,000. We've got 20 knot headwind. Okay, so let's take a look to see what it is a little bit lower. We might go actually lower. Let's go to 10,000. Oh my gosh, that's next to nothing. <laughs> yeah, okay, so here is what 10,000 looks like. We've got like zero knots, maybe a two or three knots, maybe, maybe up to four knots headwind, right, at most. Then if we jump up here to 18,000. Echo, taxi, Hoskins, KVN, to POB. All right, you guys called me back. 20 knots, direct headwind. Oh, wow. So let's just go up to 11,000 and we'll get there sooner. I gotta go. Okay, sounds good. Um, let's see. So I will just call him. I want to climb. Departure. Yeah, you just say amended one one thousand. No, that's fine. One one or one zero. Uh, one one because we're going at seventeen, right? That is. All stations, all stations, one two seven decimal one. Kodiak November Tango Kilo. Sorry, November Tango Echo is taxiing for runway one two. Hoskins. If you're a flight simmer, you want to try the same flight out here up to Caving. I've got a link down below where you can try this out. I post a lot of these flights on my Patreon page, but this one I've just made available for everybody to try out. Put on like charts and our track going up there and everything like that. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely check it out. If you're a first time viewer and you're wondering what these vests are, they're just life vests underneath of them. It's yellow and then we have a raft in the back just because we'll be going over open ocean for further distance than 50 miles and we'll be outside of gliding distance as well. All stations, Hoskins, 127 decimal one, November Tango Echo, on the roll, 3-0 for KVA, November Tango Echo for Hoskins. 1470 for 1520, rotating 60 knots. And the coastline here is so awesome looking. It's really dirty out today though. And on the way out here, I wish I could have got a video, but um, there's a volcano down at the end of this island that was actually erupting. I'll see if I can remember to throw the photo in there that I took of it. It was pretty cool. I've been waiting to see a picture, or to see it actually erupt because I know that it's probably the most active one here in PNG that I've seen, at least, as far as like smoking besides maybe Monum or something over there by WeWAC. But this one actually had a plume today, which is pretty cool to see. Said this island over here is one five miles. Yeah. Really the only time that that's really helpful is if you're starting to see a bunch of weather build up out here, you have an idea about if it is, is it moving, I guess, say you jump over to the other side of the island and then come back, you're like, okay, it's still, I can still see the island or see if it's coming closer. Here's be 5565, five, November Tango Echo, departure. November Tango Echo, Mojie, go ahead. November Tango Echo, departed Hoskins time 3-1, on track 0-0. Climbing amended one one thousand and call again off normal on the hour. Or three six zero for November Tango Echo. Yeah, no, it's always confusing to me too. I'm like, wait a minute. November Tango Echo, Roger. 
and I hope someone call on the hour and when convenient request an estimate for KVN. Yeah, November Tango Echo, estimate KVN 3 Niner, next hour. November Tango Echo, Tiki Alpha November Mike, and DJ Tipari Sports Mode B4 KVN. Was a beam already at by 57 maintaining one and a thousand? Abim Vettel Correction was Abim one at the time 31 maintaining one and a thousand estimate Abim so that's for a time 57 giving a time 0141 It's a couple minutes right past us Copy traffic for KV Yankee for Protecto Echo Remember Yeah they're getting there like two minutes within our time I wonder if we'll get there a little bit faster since we're not climbing to 17,000 it actually doesn't matter if we climb up higher or not. So Jeff and I actually did all the calculations on one of our flights, just because we were both kind of curious. I was more so curious, like, okay, so let, let's say, let's say you're climbing at 100 knots all the way up so you can get up there as quickly as possible, as opposed to a cruise climb at 115. And as far as like, as far as like, we did it off of climbing up to 16,000. So the amount of time that it, takes us, we actually get up there sooner if we're climbing at 100 knots, and then your speed increases up to your cruise speed, right? Yeah. As opposed to keeping it at just 115 all the way up, and then eventually you get up there. It actually equals all out, all said and done. Okay. So, same with like, if we were to climb up to 17,000 as opposed to 11, it'll take us longer to get up there, but then we're going to be in a descent for a longer period of time, and it evens out at the end, like, I mean, okay. we're very close. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of clouds, 50 miles out. They already said there was something up in that area. The ash build up. Uh, I don't know. It's awfully dark for a cloud, isn't it? There's a stark contrast between that and the other stuff. Might be. Or if that be maybe coming from the end of the island down here. But I don't see how though, because the winds are going that way. Like they're blowing this way. So it'd be really hard for it to be coming up this way. And they've been consistently kind of going that way at that angle for a few days now. All right, that chime lets us know we're just 200 feet. We're just about up to our magenta boxes now. If, you, if you're a flight simmer and you're just now learning how to fly and stuff like that, one thing you'll see that Brad do is we'll just level off and we'll wait till our speed actually increases all the way up to our true airspeed of 160 or basically indicated at 130. And then we'll start pulling the power out. Then also as we're leveling off, our trim, if we don't put any pressure on any of the rudders or something, it's gonna just wanna swing off. So we need to take out some right rudder pressure that we had in our climb so they can stay coordinated. Now, if you're flying like a 152 or a 172, you'll probably never notice that or even feel it. Yeah, these clouds are a lot different though, aren't they? As far as like color-wise. I don't know if it's ash or not. It'd be coming from somewhere else. But you just go just above it, just in case it is ash. Because it is quite a bit darker than all the other clouds, isn't it? And it's shaped differently than all the other clouds around, too. Alpha November Uniform, must be go ahead. You see that? It definitely looks more like it would be an ash than it would be a cloud. So, I think that's a good call. It doesn't look like a regular cloud. Hard to tell, though, isn't it? the low report of traffic, Eric Unis 1 down below 6. And the secondary frequencies it it hey, weren't for the color difference. I don't know if I would have thought much about it about it. No, but it is like pretty significantly different though than every other cloud around here. And because like look straight down how it's like really spotty looking. It's not like a regular well your side isn't as much. Take a look at my side. It's like all spotty and stuff. So yeah. Formation definitely looks a little bit different. Oh, that should probably get us up over top of most of it. Maybe. If not, we can always go off to the side. Uh, it definitely looks like ash to me. Well, the winds must just be at 17,000 because we don't really have anything quite yet. 
We could go up to 13. I don't think we're going to cover over top of that, or we might have to come off here to the right a little bit. Yeah, like this is just like, this doesn't look like a regular cloud at all. It kind of looks like a high cirrus type something, except for the color of it. It's just... The color of it, and then also as you're looking down, it's on this side, it's like little tiny holes everywhere, and the fact that that volcano at the end of the island was erupting today. Uh. <laughs> and there was reports that this one over here was erupting like three weeks ago. Okay. So it could also be throwing out ash and just blowing in this direction, so... Let's go ahead and just climb up to 13000 and yeah. see where the wind is. Or is the 5565, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, I'm climb amended 13000, do ash. November Tango Echo, I'll see you on time to a minute, one people. No, it's sharp for the traffic. November Tango Echo. Well, it doesn't seem like the ash goes for quite a while. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can't really see it. It's underneath that cloud way over there. But that mountain is up to 9,000 feet, so it's already going to start quite a bit higher than the one way down at the end of the island. Yeah, see where this cloud right here in front of us goes and then it turns into those clouds? Those ones definitely look a lot different color-wise. and It's like this is where they mix. Well, even this one right here looks more like a cloud than the one back there that we were going over. Oh. I don't know. There's never a sign saying, this is ash. <laughs> Although when you do fly through it, I had to wee whack. I've flown through it a few times and I'm like, mm, that's ash. But you couldn't really tell because it was so hazy and you have like multiple really thin layers of it. And it, it smells just kind of like a, I don't know how to, it's like a, like a dusty smell. It's not the sulfury smell? No, it's like a dust smell. Okay. And then once we're leveled off, because we're kind of over that 12,000 mark, I'm talking to the cameras here, but we're going to bring our ITT down to 700. A lot of times, well, not a lot of times, we're always like flying with our torque up to 1250, but really kind of once we pass like 12,000 foot in this airplane specific, now we're just going to limit ourselves to our ITT to seven or 700, and then our prop is going to just remain the same. And I think it's Zulu around 13,000 feet. The torque is right at 1250, the ITT is 700, and your prop is right at 2000. And open November mic, November Tango Echo, revised estimate KVA time 40, level 13000 at this time. And uh, November Tango Echo, top beat off in November mic. I'm just curious to know if those lightning strikes are 100 miles away. Let's see. 72 to 100. I'm just going to try to start noting just to see if this seems really consistent. Now, there is a big buildup way out there, so potentially it might be giving something like that, but I guess it was showing something like that as far as on the radar screenshot that I did. So many times it's like giving false indication, in my opinion. We're just dropping back down to 11,000. Hey, look at that, we've got a four knot tailwind now, but we had an eight knot headwind up just at 13,000. And flying around clouds is so pretty. I wonder what it was like for the first pilot ever to, like the very first plane to like be flying around clouds like this was. Yeah. It's nice when you have the November Tank Zulu with the radar because it will actually pick up different things like this, little tiny holes, or you'll, you'll be coming to what appears to be just a full-on impassable black wall, but it will show like, oh, there's a hole coming up. I remember coming back from caving actually down to Hoskins once, it was like that. I was like, all I can see was, it was showing that there was going to be a hole, so I'm like, well, I'm just going to continue on. <laughs> because it's showing that there's a hole around this corner. And sure enough, it was like a 90 degree turn, go for like three miles and go in again, and then it was clear again. That's awesome. It was just a full on wall. Just you were able to black. Yeah, stay visual basically, huh? Oh yeah, stay visual the whole time. But without that radar, I wouldn't even have known like that that was a possibility up, you know, 30 miles ahead of me. Yeah. I think I said my- KVN 1271 and I'll 
I say again, a November Tango Echo, up a November Mike Dash 8, 72 miles inbound from the south on descent, leaving 19,000, estimating KVN circuit at time 3-3. Three, three. All stations KVN and November Tango Echo. I tell her your radio and your distance and altitude. She's pat. She's behind us. Okay, all stations. Kay Ying and Alpha November Mike. November Tango Echo is currently five eight miles on the one eight zero radio. One one thousand estimated circuit time. Kay Ying three niner. Who is it? One nine thousand coming. Alpha November Mike. Copy that. And we will be on descent initially to 12,000. We'll give you a call approaching 12,000. Vertical track. Vertical track. But whenever she calls, we don't have to go down now, but whenever she calls, then we could just say, we've got you on TCAS and we're on this radio. She's basically going to ask, is it okay if I continue through your altitude? Where'd she go? To zoom in, otherwise it doesn't show her. Uh, I don't know where it went. It's our crappy TCAS for you. Five miles. That's 2,400 feet. Should be seen or be too long. 15 well, miles is 15 a long ways. 15 miles, way. it is a long ways. November Tango Echo, Alpha November Mike. November Tango Echo, go ahead. Uh, we're for nine, uh, Keep your smiles to run the caving and we are passing 12,700. Roger, uh, November Tango Echo has you on TCAS and uh, descent at will. Uh, copy, just go ahead your distance and level, thanks. Ah, uh, okay. Four or five miles on the 180 radio. 1,000. Maintaining 1,000, November Tango Echo. Copied. Delta November Mike and leaving 12,000. Trying to process why it would be beneficial for them if we would start to descent earlier. Um, because then they would be a higher altitude over top of us going down. Because they're going to be descending further on down. But like, okay, like let's say they come down to 12,000 feet and then they have to level off because they can't continue their descent with us being at 11,000. Whereas if we started our descent earlier, then they can just continue their descent where they're still remaining like three or four or 5,000 feet above us because now we're a little bit lower at them. Echo, off in November, Mike Lee, three on the GPS miles. Giving a distance, maintaining 1,000. Let's go ahead to distance, thanks. Never protect my now three niner miles, still on the 180 radio, one 1,000. We'll be starting our top of descent shortly in two minutes. Okay, copy that. At this stage, uh, 370 me, uh, GPS uh, caving, and we are looking for you, maintaining 1,000. It looks like you're Vertical about track. one, two miles, we're one, two miles at your three to four o'clock. Copy, looking off of the night. I think they're kind of waiting for us. And we're now three, seven miles to run KVN over Pango Echo, starting top of descent. Uh, copy, three or four miles inside the top. Happy for us to continue our descent through your level. Hey, firm, have a nice day. See you then. Over Pango Echo. Hey, Kingy. Uh, for the mic. And I think that's the Dash 8. And I went and I looked inside their airplane and it's like archaic. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's like 1972 or something like that. And it makes you appreciate what we have in here, that's for uh -huh. sure. Fine, be him. Yeah? We're way over there. Oh, he's back. Oh, yep, I see him. I had my worst turbulence ever coming into caving once. Like, it was like full-on storms like for as far as you could see all the way across the island and then keep going i had zulu this was like 2018 and i tried to maneuver as much as i possibly could to try to find the holes and stuff but it was just 
I mean, it was built to the heavens as far as you could see, and it was just a black wall. And I went over top of the island and then cut into that way, and it was like full control movements to like try to keep my wings level. I was pretty, I was pretty nervous on that one. It slowed down, like, it wasn't any lightning or anything like that, it was just the build-ups were so built up that the, like the rising air was just unbelievable. But it was two, three, zero. And then within an hour it was all gone. I was like, oh gosh. This is really typical of caving area, is having these little rain showers all around twice here. All stations, caving. Companies in the mic. Six months and uh, checking for a wide right downwind runway one two. All stations KVN. Okay, so as we're getting this close, look at your speed. You're already at 170 and you're about ready to be punching in. And it's there's so many times that it fluctuates with over 12 knots if we go through clouds that we don't want to be that close. Off any bugs that we might have. Back to perfect weather. All right, so looks like we'll have have a easterly northeasterly wind, and it looks like she's on final now. It looks like according to this. All stations, KV Yang, November Tango Echo, four miles to run. We'll be entering right downwind, runway one, two. November Tango Echo for KV Yang. We need to go around, increase power pitch for 73, flaps 20, and setting max torque for the climb. Climbing straight ahead. Next time I'm going to over five the field. All stations, KV Yang, November Tango Echo. Be changing to uh, overfly in the field and ring left down one runway one two. Keeping. It looks like this end of the runway is where they're doing the work now. So the tango is all phase of the mic tonnage on the ground one zero zero five. Zero zero five, thanks. The notams don't really depict exactly what they're doing very well all the time, does it? I have a hard time picturing it. Oh, the ocean looks nice here. It sure nice does. sandy beaches. The coral goes right up to it, though. Sounds like a plus to me. Snorkeling. Look at some cheese. Hey, we made a circuit call. You want to cancel SAR? I have not canceled SAR. Or be at 861, November Tango Echo. What do you mean how strong the winds are down here? They were only four knots at 1,000 and now you're already at 13. It's crazy. Or be at 861, November Tango Echo in the circuit KV and cancel SAR. What was the other frequency that she gave us? 861, 5565. There's a good chance you'll have like wind shear and all kinds of fun stuff below to the ground. Morsley 5565, November Tango Echo, in the circuit KVN, cancel SAR. November Tango Echo, KVN approach, Tango Echo. November Tango Echo. Yeah, 11 knots, direct crosswind. 500. Give yourself a little extra knots in case the wind shear starts bouncing your knots all around. Okay. Because it's super long and we don't need to be coming in at our absolute vera.
Yeah, I think that's the Dash 8 that I climbed into. Out of her way so she can get out of here easily as well. It's a lot different than <laughs> every time we come here it looks different, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We were over there last time, weren't we? Yeah, we normally park over here by the windsock. Just park in the corner and then swing it around. Awesome. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining Brad and I on this flight. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, give it a thumbs up if you did. And like I said, if you're a flight simmer and you want to check out this flight or you want to learn how to fly the Kodiak, check out some links down below. We we'll actually have a course that walks you through all different things about the G1000 and flying the Kodiak specific. So thanks again. See you guys next time.